my friends. Time for another one. Uh, it shouldn't be too long. It's it's not a long page, but it's got some really interesting information. So let's have a look. We got uh, corporate control of mainstream media. MSN exits to demoralize the public. Patrick Herbert. Um, July 30th, 2020 from Patrick Herbert's website. Victimization by mainstream media. It's become increasingly obvious that the corporate control of mainstream media exists to demoralize the public by cherry picking stories that favor the narrative that promotes victimizations. Incidents that are in the minority are amplified with the purposeful repetitive selection to give the impression that the conditions and circumstances surrounding a particular narrative are in the majority. Now, this is what I was talking about in the last video in one of their four ways that they go about stories. I have observed the effect that the mainstream narratives have on both collective and an individual level and the ferocious intensity with which people conceive that the world that they read about has no one that has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the reality that they believe exists right outside their front door. One need to look any further than the ocean of mask wearing individuals walking about in public convinced that the breath of their neighbor or fellow pedestrian is a weapon of mass destruction. The media has purposely promoted the concept that those who do not wear a mask are an extra strength and exist existential threat to you and your family. According to them, you are the victim to their callous behavior that ultimately freedom loving people who refuse to wear a mask are threats to society. This is intentional. For as you have been the victim and victimized, you will willingly forgo any of your freedoms for a guarantee of safety. And people just attack and, and surround and gang up and they take all their anger and frustration out that they've, they've had from everyone, like, like high up elites, forcing restrictions upon them. They take them out on the nearest good Samaritan citizen that's standing up for, for their rights. And, and then everyone else decides to jump in on the bandwagon. So, this is intentional, as for you have been victimized and will forego any of your freedoms, granted safety. Oh, and for a good measure, the media will add that you are probably a Trump supporter and thus COVID-19 deniers, and a tactic sh sure to engage, enrage the reader even further and blatant effort to steer the reader politically. While the fake pandemic is a great example of the media's role in victimizing the audience, the tactic has been deployed for a long before then, primarily for the promotion of a political, radical and gender divide as part of the effort by those at the top to divide and rule over the population. Now I am not saying that I believe all of this, all uh, YouTube um, people listening in. I am merely bringing this to people's attention and it doesn't necessarily affect my opinion and I am not forcing my opinion on people. So this is a um, video for educational purposes that uh, people need to be, be aware of under free speech. Okay, So a political, racial, and a gender divide. divide is part of the effort by those at the top to divide over the population. As for the attention span of the average reader has shrunk, the media has focused its energy on manufacturing loaded headlines. For the most part, it's headline exchange between people who do not have time to read the content but want to lean credence to their own perspective over an issue. A heavily emotionalized headline will do just that, and using technology you can fire that headline in every direction like a machine gun. These headlines are thusly shared rapidly via text message or as opposed to timelines to various social medias. As the world is currently filled with an army of social justice warriors, there are too many uh, timeline feeds with selective headlines that emotionally emphasize the severity of the issues they feel they are valiantly fighting for or against. Reading through cherry-picked or heavily manipulated headlines on mainstream media news websites can see the reoccurrence of common themes. 1. Everyone loses races. 2. Everyone desires to keep women and minorities down. 3. Members of the LGBT plus community are in danger. And, and 4. COVID-19 is killing everyone everywhere at every moment. So, victimization and demoralization. Um, a quote. 
if the CIA owns everyone of significance in the major media, for my CIA director, William Colby, that says the CIA owns everyone. And most of the people that read the news are either married to um, political senators and things like that, or married to, to CIA operatives. Also manipulated other pictures that accompany the stories. Normally these are selected in ways that will further follow psychologically impact of which the article is trying to convoy. Um, a story about Joe Biden making gaffes will be accompanied by a picture of Joe Biden looking confused. The story about COVID-19 will show a covered gurney surrounded by people in hazmat suits. A story about racism, racism will show pictures that emphasize the narrative such a picture of people in robes typically worn by the Ku Klux Klan. I have even seen stock photography of young white men holding torches, mouths open as if in yelling, with the headlights suggesting that they were white present Trump supporters. With these elements combined tactically, it should be quite obvious that they that we are not confronted with organizations that seek to inform us, but instead to propagandize us along the divide. And within that divide, they seek to victimize and demoralize us. The divides are many, from political to race down to intergender, and they are being radical subversions as we are being introduced to very complexes regarding to gender and further complicated by what we are told is a biological misunderstanding with a narrative that is going so far as to try and alter our own perceptions and our own gender biology. J.K. Rowling has been insistently attacked for seemingly innocent defense of what she considers to be the definition of a biological female, something that she has lived and identified with her whole entire life. Those attacking her feel some level of injustice has been bestowed upon them that somehow they are being denied their own identity. Some go so far to claim that these grievances are no less destructive than a physical attack. Sometimes emotionally, like, words, like, emotional abuse can hurt more than physical abuse, I will say that. So, how did they reach these conclusions? Victimization. Certainly, we all experience discrimination at some point in our life. The truth is, is it happens in perpetuity. It's one, when one reads the headlines and the story is promoted by the mainstream media. Quote by Mika Brzezinski. Our job is to control exactly what the people think. MSNBC. And then it's like where the other one where Chris Cuomo says, um, you don't have a right to think we tell you what to think and that's in the last video there is a definite psychological impact and the people behind the engineering of these divides understand that you do not have a black versus white white man versus woman gender versus biology versus gender fluidity religion versus religion and woke versus unwoke without victimization of one or the other there is no better place than to engineer this divide by promoting victimization than to through the corporate mainstream media elements most consumed by a majority of the population, television news, newspaper, magazines and websites, an effort done mostly intentionally in order to manipulate large swaths of society into divided, divided positions, much like a chessboard. It is with the narratives that they build in our minds that allows them to control us emotionally and we forgo any semblance of emotional control when we allow ourselves to become victims. We are segmented into little-minded collections, played against each other like across the board in whichever way is politically, financially and or socially expedient of the corporate media masters for the reasons which they seek to benefit from. The majority of humanity, the 99%, are thus regulated to the role of simple pawns in a much larger game whose existence they may never be aware of. Okay, and all you notice, like, since 2014 is when this Karen stuff started the amount of people getting off and bullying a woman and calling her a Karen if she doesn't go again if she doesn't agree with your thoughts it is just ridiculous the amount of racial hatred coming from people when people uh, aren't normally like that it, we're the same shit different bucket we're all the same on the inside, just different on the outside, and the, the, this 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 dividing and separation is part of the tactic because when we're divided as a human collective, um, we're not as strong. When we when we're together, like when a disaster happens and we all pull together to help everyone rebuild, 
the collective, the human collective is really strong and at the moment we've got a lot of cognitive dissonance going on because people don't want to accept that they're being lied to by all these people that they have trusted their entire lives. And this is part of it, yeah, you, you need to look outside the box outside of your programming and think, is this real, like, why, what's their agenda and, and look at the bigger picture. All right. Thanks for watching. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Raise your vibrations and much love to you all wherever you are in the world. Thank you. Bye.